welcome to season three, episode two of the Women of Rock Oral History Project podcast. You can watch the full video interviews on our YouTube channel, Vimeo channel, or on the website womenofrock.org. This episode features painter, musician, bass player, and all-around stellar human being, Jill Emery. Jill played bass in Hole, Mazzy Sar, and Superheroines, among others. She is a fantastic painter. One of her paintings is actually featured on the back of Hole's album, Pretty on the Inside. And you can check out her art, maybe even buy something, on her Etsy page. Enjoy the interview with Jill Emery. Oh yeah, and I noticed, I posted it to my story because I thought it was so ridiculous, but you know the store H&M? Um, yeah. Okay, yeah, like a big corporate chain. They're oh, selling yeah. a whole t-shirt with that same like logo on it. See so, you now, H&M? Yeah. Oh, I went in there once and it was like a fucking nightclub. It uh-huh. was a nightmare. But, um, cause someone wanted me to get them a quick and easy t-shirt that's fast fashion where it's just trash. Yeah. In a minute. But so they're selling that there. I can't that's- imagine. I know. I'm shocked. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah. But I was like, you know, I know it's illegal, but I also would prefer young girls to wear that t-shirt than like yeah. other t-shirts. No, I, <laughs> no, I hear you. I would yeah. be shocked. It would be like, wow, kid, you know, yeah. I mean, it's, I, I hear you. Yeah. yeah um uh oh yeah and i just wanted to ask you are you are you in recovery no i mean i never really did drugs but i i can like be happy for people that are because i um i joined like i didn't join it i got an al-anon book for someone in my life and and it's really helping me a lot um i started doing that too i just a person I interviewed actually became my Al-Anon sponsor. <laughs> so, oh, wow. yeah. Um, yeah. It just like comes up a lot in interviews and we ended up having all these things in common and I've been like sober for a long time, but I still have these sort of like issues with just relationships and, you know, any kind, like my family and. Oh, oh totally. And my, you know, and I was like, so I think maybe like, should I try Al-Anon? They're just like. Uh, yeah. This so, okay. So thing. you, you did like, like AA or NA? Or yeah, AA? I did like rehab and so, and AA and sober houses wow. and all that. Well, like, I'm happy for you because yeah. that's a, I've watched people fall in and out. I've watched people die. I just, yep. it's like, you know, and I, I don't know, but to be present, if you can, I mean, it, it just seems when people are blurry in that like stupor of like alcohol or drugs, it's just, I don't know. Yeah. But what do I know? I mean, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's great. I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't, maybe it's great for people who like aren't, don't have that addict personality or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but so you, you mentioned that you never really had a problem, but how were you able to avoid that? Like being in, the scene that you were in at the time when drugs and alcohol and like heroin and stuff were so prevalent. You know, it's odd. I, I, I have no idea why I, I didn't do drugs. I mean, I probably didn't smoke pot till I was like 21 or something and like alcohol. Now I'll have a beer, you know, like, cause I, I really can appreciate a good quality beer. Yeah. Or maybe I'll have a glass of wine, but that's it and it it doesn't mean anything more than the taste i'm not looking for a buzz yeah so how i got around that i i truly don't know but maybe that's why i was so you know not high strung but stressed you know i mean my my first um tour yeah my first tour was with sylvia jancosa and she she was a heroin addict and i'm i don't really talk to her not because we just don't really talk but she was a very nice person very talented crazy guitarist um but i can remember we were opening for soundgarden on our tour and that was huge that was like 
I can't remember if it was 89 or something like that. And she's driving the van, we're on tour, and she like leans out the window and throws up because she's like totally high. And I just, I don't know, it just, it was crazy. And I couldn't relate to it, but I mean, that's just kind of what came with the territory. And, and that just played on in most of the music I was in, you know, that story. Well, I'm glad you didn't. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, glad too. Exactly. I don't, <laughs> yeah, seriously, I don't need any more problems. I got, you know, I got to deal with my own self, which, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. All right, well, um, yeah, so you've like listened to a lot of these, um, you said, so you know that it's like pretty casual conversation, self-guided, uh, like a, this is your life from yeah. to present day. Um, yeah, sometimes I'll just <laughs> like what I just did. If a topic comes up, I'll just start talking about that. I um, can totally relate to that. Okay, cool. I'm, yeah. I'm good with that. I can swing around. Okay. Um, all right. I don't want to keep you for nine hours. Yeah, no. My dog is finally yeah, I gotta go. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So let's jump in um, to the, the very beginning. Where did you grow up? Little Jill Emery. Oh, yeah. For the most part, I, I mean, that I can think it's called Diamond Bar. And it was, you know, they still had like dirt jumps where I'd take my bike and go off of that. And um, they didn't have a high school at the time. And this is kind of where I'm starting because my dad, uh, he had left my mom, surprisingly, like, I don't know, that was weird. I think I was maybe 14 or something. And so he just kind of walked away and left us. Um, I have two brothers, I'm in the middle. So there's Eric, me, and then Mark. And then my mom kept, you know, she, you know, she got to keep the house and then she had to kind of just keep the house afloat with these kids, you know, going into teenager years. So that was kind of where everything was starting. I mean, beyond that, I, I was born in Montebello, California, which everything's just changed probably out there too, you know. Wait, it, so is Diamond Bar also in California? You're yeah, it's in California and it's, it's about like, 20 minutes from like a college hub in Claremont. I don't know, maybe that's like um, tons of colleges there, like maybe five. Yeah. I have, and, yeah, I have heard of that. So that's a good yeah, point. Yeah. But um, so your dad left, what did your mom do to support you guys as a single parent? Um, she worked for doctors, but uh, back then I swear it was, I was like, mom, this sounds like you guys were the wild, wild west. It was like an urgent care. And my mom, I don't even know, I, maybe she did a little schooling for this, but she was taking x-rays, giving shots, drawing blood. Uh, the doctor's like, hold this while I'm doing surgery, hold this flesh or whatever. I don't know what the hell, but I'm, I'm, I just couldn't believe it. And so, but I would say, how much are you getting paid as I got a little older? And I swear it felt like, a little above minimum wage and I'm like they're not paying you enough so but honestly she she just did whatever she could to keep us afloat and she she was amazing and uh yeah I don't know how she did it I guess she scrimped a lot you know but we had a nice house that was you know suburban yeah you know so we were safe in that situation and uh, what about your brother? So you have a younger brother and an older brother. Do you guys get yeah. along or were you close? Uh, we were all three different. Like the older one went skiing. The younger one was working on cars. And I was kind of a tomboy type. And <clears throat> so I just, I always wanted to play sports, but they were playing and I would just watch. But, you know, I could throw the ball and hit and all that, but I wasn't on a team or anything. So... And then I got into music and I was kind of the offbeat one in the family. I guess they call that black sheep, but in every way, you know, being gay and uh, the only girl in a Italian family. And it's, you know, that's kind of harsh in that situation. And then uh, being vegetarian at the time. 
everything was just like, oh God, everything about you, you know? And so, and then being a musician, that throwing that in. So, but it's okay. It all felt normal to me. I was like, yeah, this is normal, you know? So excited. Um, <laughs> you said gay, vegetarian, now vegan. Um, how young were you? I'm, I'm also a gay now. Oh my God, another creepy. Off yeah. yeah, so got the like trifecta there. Yeah, but um, now that's all, <laughs> you know, you, yeah, there you go. But uh, how young were you when you like became aware of your sexuality or that you were um, I pretty much felt like, I felt like Jodie Foster or something when I, you know, I was not in Taxi Driver, of course, maybe, um, uh, what's, what's that one? Alice doesn't live here anymore or something, you know, uh, but I would say probably 10 or something. It just felt like I gravitated more towards women or, or girls at the time. It just felt more emotionally good for me, more safe and, you know, and right. Yeah. It just felt natural. That's all. I mean, but you know, Poor guys. I mean, I did date some guys throughout, uh, and they're just probably like, "What's up with her?" You know, and I, you know, maybe it was pressure, but you know, there, you know, there was some nice guys, but just that wasn't my scene. You know? Same. My poor high school boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, we could start a group therapy for now. No. Did you have a sense that? you know, obviously because you were still trying to like date guys, did you have a sense that to come out or to be gay was wrong or were you like scared about it? Well, I mean, I, you know, I would go into LA and I would meet uh, women at the like punk shows and, you know, I, would, you know, date them, if you can call it that at 15. And uh, so I, I was very nervous because I knew my mom was not going to be thrilled, you know, just, you know, she had expectations. I'll get married, meet a guy, have kids. So thankfully my brothers fulfilled that, you know, they got great kids and uh, my mom's the greatest grandma. Um, so, but that being said, it took a while, even though it was obvious, you know, I thought it was obvious. I finally said it to my mom, like maybe when I was 22, because, you know, I just, I was so scared. Yeah. And not that she was going to disown me, but just the disappointment. And I, oh, and I still worry about her today if she's worried about something or fear. And then now I'm like, you know what? She, she'll tell her friends, yeah, you know, my daughter with her partner or whatever, you know. Yeah. So she's, it's great, you know. I love it. Happy ending. Yeah, shockingly. Um, going uh, back a little bit, I do want to know eventually how at 15 you were going to shows in LA. But um, oh, yeah. when did you uh, first start um, expressing yourself creatively? Like, were you a creative kid? And was that yeah. something that was encouraged? Like, did your mom encourage it or were you discouraged from? Uh, you know what? Like, I, my mom was actually, despite I moved out later, like, I think I was about 17, I moved in with my grandma because there was turbulence with my mom at the time. However, when I started uh, my first punk band at 15 and a half, uh, you know, we none, I couldn't really play that good, but we, my mom would let us rehearse in the garage and we were called the asexuals. And so it was Roz Williams and I, he, he was Roger at the time and he went on to do Christian Death and Shadow Project. But so we, him and I met in high school and we were just two like little punkers amongst predominantly Hispanic and black um, people. So it was, so when I saw him in a Ramones shirt and I was wearing a runaway shirt or something, what that we made, I mean, we didn't, we didn't have any money. So um, my mom was cool. She let us rehearse songs called Slow Death. And, you know, we're just, you know, you're so plastic and mannequin depression, just, and 
that was pretty cool, shockingly. But um, when I, so yeah. yeah. That's awesome. um, did, when you were in Asexual, did you guys ever play out or anything? I know you were really- We played, young. I think one gig and it was terrible because it was at not a metal type backyard party, but something like that. And I think Roz like freaked out because he, you know, he was gay too. We were, we would talk about it on the phone and whispering and just kids, you know, talking. And he just, I don't, I think he just was not into it. And then Steve and I went off and started a band called The Decadent while Roz went off and did Christian Death. He, that was the beginning of him, you know, starting, finding himself as well. I mean, we were, you know, I don't know if you watch, you, you don't have kids or do you have kids? No. Yeah, I know. So I, well, <laughs> but you, I, I, yeah. Well, I watched my nieces and nephews as they were that age, trying to find themselves, changing their hair. So imagine being that age, you, you didn't know who you were, but you had a feeling of things. Mm -hmm. So he wanted to express his stuff more and Steve and I wanted to do more like kind of arty punk and uh we went on from there and yeah i'm just always amazed man my first band when i was 16 we were, it was just like terrible you know i didn't even have like cool influences then or anything i don't think i was exposed to but but how would you start if you i know have... right yeah it was just like the radio i mean it's funny now i listen to it and i'm like why is this cute man like you really put a lot of effort into this but then i hear people like you who do who have like really interesting first bands <laughs> oh yeah well <laughs> oh, i mean it was i mean i don't know i mean i can't tell i mean all i knew is i i just wanted to play and i didn't you just da 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 you know and then you learn and you get thrown into things and you learn more and you learn more mm -hmm. and and you express more and differently of finding echelons of styles of what you like and levels and um but it, you know the point is is that you you did it and that's what i tell people they're well i wish i was um a guitar player and i'm like okay well today if you start today in two years maybe you could be excellent mm -hmm. but within that time you could be learning and so you're throwing time away if you really want that and like, I couldn't really play that great, but then it just got better and better. And I think I watch people stick with things in general and you can just get better, you know, whether you take lessons or not. How did you, um, so were, were you always a bass player and how did that wind up being your like main instrument or the instrument that you played in all these bands? Well, I, you know, I, I remember this guy telling me you should play bass. And I said, oh, okay. And he goes, Here, here's one you can get for a hundred dollars. And you, and I still have it. And you, so I said, well, I don't have any money. Oh, I'll sell my bike. So then I got one and borrowed an amp and then just started from there, you know, and I, it didn't have to necessarily be the bass. It just, he just said the bass and I was like, oh, the bass. Yeah. And I didn't even understand what the bass was supposed to do in music. And to this day, I talk to people and I'm like, God, this bass line's so great. And they're like, I never noticed it. I can't hear it. And, um, you know, if you're not looking for it, it's, and that's why maybe nowadays they strip down. Have you ever seen videos like that? I, like I saw an Entwistle one the other day and it's just the bass and you, People that don't play it would not believe what their parts are. And well, with him, and like, I know it's insane. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was your um, high school experience like? And what were like your mom's expectations for you after high school? Or what did you plan to do or want to do with your life? <laughs> yeah, I can't remember who one of um, someone you interviewed, and I can't remember who it was, but they said the same thing I'm going to say. <clears throat> My mom's like, just 
take some college and you'll have something to fall back on while you're doing your music. And um, so I tried, but it was mostly, I took one psychology class and maybe two art classes. And I just, it just wasn't, school wasn't for me. I just, I was more of a doer of let's just keep playing. Let's just write songs, make up stuff, you know. Yeah, and I was I was painting at the time too, but not. It was more expressive, and it wasn't. I wasn't, you know, taking it that seriously. But it was a, an outlet for expressing, mm -hmm. and I was lucky. <clears throat> at at age fifteen, everything was at that time was really blossoming in the sense that my suburban world was opening up, and <clears throat> because I met. Somehow I met Art de Leon and he had a building. Who could have a building? I mean, how do you have that? But he, I guess he rented a space in, in uh, Pomona, which was 10 minutes away from my house. And he would let us put on art shows. We would make films on his camp, like super eight cameras. And, you know, just, he was just open and said, let's do this. Let's just do whatever we want. And, you know, I think, Christian Death played there. A lot of punk bands came through there and played and it was a dive and it was always being busted. And, um, but people like that, like he let me have an art show there. And I, so I just kept expressing myself because it was like, hey, yeah, do it, do it. So I was lucky to meet people that were, and same thing with Steve, the drummer um, from The Decadent and Asexuals. I met his family, they were, so arty and they lived in claremont and i was like whoa this is not suburban it's cool old houses and um you know his grandfather was a, a famous ceramicist uh his uncle was david lindley who played with uh, jackson brown i believe and um his father was chris darrow who played uh with nitty gritty dirt band and i, I you know just different bands from the 60s and 70s and on so we were i was lucky to meet these people and it just kind of nurtured me in that sense mm. yeah um yeah well before i move on i do want to go back a little bit so you said that you were uh going to la and seeing punk shows um what years were those and what was the scene like at the time and who were some of your influences yeah, I somehow I right away I I I need to drive. I have to drive. So I got my license at 15 and a half or however you do that. And I my family would pass down this Mustang and so I would just be the driver for everyone. And so I would go into LA and go see all the punk bands, the whiskey, uh the mask, uh just I millions of clubs out there yeah. and it, it was thriving to me it was just because i would get to go and be right there get you know against the stage with all the bands and as time went on i would say it was about 77 78 so uh i would see the runaways joan jett lived right across from the whiskey i'd go over to her house somehow i don't know how but she was really into drugs. So it kind of was, you know, drinking. And so I was a little bit like, Ugh, what's the scene, you know? Um, but still, I, I liked the runaways at the time. And then after, right as soon as I saw Patti Smith, it just blew everything out of the water. Uh, I just couldn't believe her swagger, her, her in, just down to earth. She's Capricorn, but just so down to earth and but in there in in the trenches and that just changed everything uh, you know. um, except she i mean now like even reading her books now she's just grown so much and but still keeps that the artist part of her you know yeah so oh. Yeah, I think I saw her in 77 and I had a t-shirt that finally just melted. It was just done after <laughs> all those years, but yeah. Um, 
So you mentioned uh, asexual, mm -hmm. decadent, went to college, took a few classes, not for you. Um, when did you begin, uh, like what was your first kind of band? Was it decadent that that played out or toured or yeah. what you, okay so that was like your first professional band experience yeah I mean we would play the clubs but the the funny part about that band is it was really fun we I think we put out one single but and uh you know and the way the scene is Ed Culver did the cover and he did all the bands he's amazing and if you look at his archives it's that he was there documenting, it, it was great. But anyway, so we somehow uh, headlined in Orange County over social distortion. Now, I don't know how, I mean, and we were just like, oh yeah, social distortion with those fake English accents, but I ended up really liking them. You know, you're just dumb and you're a kid saying things and pretending you're in a gang, I don't know. but. Yeah, so we so we're headlining over social distortion. Then in the meantime, our first show out of town is in San Francisco, and we're opening for the Dead Kennedys. And it's I just could I don't even know how any of this happened because I kind of was in daydream land, even though I wasn't doing drugs or drinking. I was just very daydreamy, you know. So things like that, or uh, another band I started later in life. Uh, tear drain we ended up I think opening for Weezer at this show he somehow contacted me and said hey you want to play I'm like oh my god yeah and but it was at a club it wasn't huge but here's the point to all this you know I'm gonna just make a though I have my issues with Courtney plenty of them honestly her drive if I had her drive and know how of hooking up everything, cause I didn't, I, I just wanted to be the artist. I just wanted to play. I didn't want to deal with any of that. So her drive really helped. I mean, cause there would be no reason the other bands I was doing didn't go to those levels, but she just, she was good at that. She was very good. So if, if you need a PR person, I would go to her yeah. or, <laughs> or, or whatever. I mean, yeah. there was my compliment, you know, that's my compliment yeah, no. to her, seriously. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, well, I just kind of, you did a lot of, you were in a lot of bands. Yeah. Like late eighties through mm -hmm. the mid nineties. Mm -hmm. but. Um, like, how did you join Super Heroines? Yeah. Why did you leave? Um, yeah. You know, how did you join Hole? Why did Ugh, you leave yeah. Hole? It was like Good a few cool. years in, in each band. So I'm just wondering how they happened and then why you ended well, up leaving. I guess with the Decadent, as we played a show with the Super Heroines at the time, okay. and their bass player left. She really wasn't into it. and. So then Eva's like, I want you in my band. And I'm like, uh, okay. But then Steve, I, I, felt, I felt connected to him in a way because of the music and so young. So I went to the Super Heroines, but we took Steve along and he played on half of the record. And then we got another drummer, China. He played on the other half. Um, so that's how that got started and then even i end up living together writing together uh whatever but <laughs> wait what's the app part whatever you yeah. weren't in a relationship with your bandmate were you yes yeah, oh it's, no I, I don't know how or why <laughs> like yeah you must hear that often yeah. or no not often <laughs> but i don't you know how does that happen you're young that eh? yeah yeah. But you, you know, so that's how, in that timeline, that's how I got to the super heroines. And I'm trying to remember what happened after that. I guess we ended up breaking up after a while, the band, and I was doing just tons of odd jobs. So I was doing this odd job, like making jewelry 
in this loft uh, in LA. I lived in LA at the time. And it was all women in there, all girls. So it was crazy. But Laurel, uh, Laurel Stearns said to me, hey, uh, this band is looking for a bass player. Are you interested? So I thought, oh, okay, I'll check it out. So I went to the rehearsal studio. I can't remember where we were in LA, I guess. And it was whole. And I go in there. And it was, the energy was just crazy. I mean, Carolyn was there, Eric and Courtney. And I go in and I'm trying to understand their songs. And, but there was something about it that I related to. It was very turbulent though. Mm. Why would I relate to turbulence? I don't know, but well, probably stuff going on inside of me that I didn't express. Uh, but as I was leaving, I, I didn't really say anything. I just kind of left after I said, okay, well, I'll talk to you guys later. And then Courtney comes out and <laughs> corners me at my car and says, well, you, you know, you want to do this, right? You're going to be in the band, right? And I'm like, well, okay, yeah, sure. You know, let's, let's do it. And so then we just, I think we would rehearse at Jabberjaw, another club at the time. And, uh, it, you know, we would play shows, but honestly, it felt like, you know, six people in the audience and one of them was my partner, Stacy at the time. And so she witnessed everything, but basically no one was in the audience. And then all of a sudden as time went on, it started growing. She, she was very good at getting us press, you know, uh, she, you know, it started with Flipside and then, you know, I can remember one little thing and it, it seems funny, but people can relate to it, I'm sure. She got Roddy Bottom from um, Faith No More to wear our whole t-shirt in their video. And so it was like, okay, I understand how this works. We're gonna do this, we're gonna do that. And I was like, okay, great, good, go for it. You're doing good, yep. you know? and. And she was stripping at the time. So I think she was kind of making good money to help, you know, pay for rehearsals. Cause I, I didn't really have money. I mean, it just wasn't in my thing. Um, and so she was doing that, but Eric had a really good job at Capitol Records. So hence that, you know, uh, but he, after she stopped stripping, she's like, I can't do this anymore. We got to be a band. It's like, yeah, that's great. So Eric kind of was helping fund things. Uh, I guess her nose job was one of them. And I say that, no, I say that because she, I think she felt obligated to pay Eric back. So as we were getting bigger, we were in the, lawyer's office and she's like Carolyn you're only going to get this much percent like knocking her percentage publishing down and Jill you're gonna and I'm like no no not happening with me and I don't think it's fair it's happening to Carolyn but I can't fight all the battles so she knocked her percentage half and I think she wanted to maybe help it like pay her. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure. But today, when I looked at our publishing, I guess this isn't anyone's business, but it is a business in the sense that you think women are for women, but you got to be very careful. Because um, mm -hmm. she is getting, I think, 60% while now ours are all kind of down. Not that there's tons of money, but you know, yeah. it, it's the point. Uh, and I always felt like I'm trying to fight all these lawyers and I don't even know what I'm saying. I'm just know what's right and what's wrong. And I always was looking for justice, which is kind of, I don't know if that's a downfall, but it felt like it was eating me up inside because I felt like there was cruelty in, in that band. And uh, I don't like that. I, I don't like that. And I felt like that was happening to Carolyn. It's like the abused is going to turn on the abused. And I'm like, Mm, and so I, I would get in fights and, it, you know, it wasn't cool. So I, yeah. Um, 
Yeah, and um, well, and just in that same vein, so you had come from, you know, this really kind of like underground scene, mm -hmm. then playing in Hole, Pretty on the Inside, Kim Gordon produced it, which was another great like Courtney idea for pub publicity. Oh yeah, that was good. Yeah. yeah, Caroline Records, which is like, I don't know, you mentioned lawyers. So I know Caroline is a major label, but I always thought of it as an independent label. Yeah. The way that yeah. they present themselves. Yeah. Um, yeah, just, um, I sort of, I just like hearing people's experiences with record labels, whether, you know, they be independent or major labels. And it sounds like you have had experience with both because in Mazzy Star, right? You were working yeah. in a band who was on an actual major label. Yeah. You mentioned lawyers and having to talk to people in contention. Um, what are just like what are some of the pros and cons of being in a bigger working band and having major label representation and distribution versus yeah. being an underground band on like a really independent label i mean i i can really appreciate the small label but at the same time when i was doing these van tours and I also mentioned Sylvia Giancosa that I forgot after the superheroines I went on tour with her and we opened for Soundgarden I forgot the timeline but anyway when you're doing van tours you're sleeping in you know on people's floors um couches whatever but when you get it to a major label it turns into a tour bus you get your own bunk and then it got to the point not with Hull, I don't think, but with Mousy Star, I was very lucky to get my own room. It was great. And, you know, and it, that was the great part. Um, but yeah, you do want your music to be heard. And, and, you know, I, yeah, I want to make money because this is my craft. This is my art. But it, money wasn't, it wasn't really flowing. I mean, you know, I, it wasn't great. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, is I did quit when before Hole actually signed mm. to the major label, and people are like, "Stick it out," and I'm like, "No, I, the money's not worth it," and 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 I'm fine. I mean, I'm fine, but it it wasn't worth it. It was too traumatizing and post traumatic stress disorder. You know, it's like uh, frazzled. What uh, more specifically wasn't worth it? Was it the band dynamics was it the the pay cuts um well i to me when first of all when you're treating a person bad that's not okay i i always say no i just i say you work it out or you walk away but you you don't i don't want to witness that i don't think it's okay so um so basically what was the question <laughs> Oh, just what well, you said, um, you know, that there, that it oh, was the, oh, the major, but what wasn't worth it specifically. Okay. Yeah. So at the time, and I don't like, it's not all bad. It's not all bad. It was, I was very, I loved playing. I loved expressing myself. And so with Hall, it was a great vehicle. It was, it was great. Um, but as as you know, it was it was very difficult. Um, there were times I can remember. This was like towards the end, but I think we were in Scotland on tour, and something Courtney was just saying something to me, and I think it had to do with the Vaselines, the band, and the guy acting like something. Me and the guy, I don't know what. She was just pushing my buttons, and then. We started kind of fighting a bit. And I don't know if you've ever been around her. She's super tall and strong. Yeah. And I'm kind of short, like five, three. And she, I think she's almost six feet. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so she was just going on and hitting me and hitting me with this the like negative, like crap, you know? And then, I don't know, she dumped sugar on my head and I was like, that's it. And I just got her in a headlock and I was just like, I'm, I'm not going to fucking let you go. And I, and then, but mostly 
I, if I let her go, I was scared. I was like, she's gonna fucking get me, man. But I just, I got her, but what do I do now? But I was so mad. Yeah. So thankfully people, these guys pulled us apart because I would have probably been flattened after that, you know? <laughs> so that, I remember we were playing with Daisy Chainsaw, this band, and then I was just so pissed. So I was hanging out with them and the girl, that was the night the girl just shaved my head. I go, just, I'm not washing this sugar out. Just fucking shave my head, you know? And, and she, she had her head shaved too, this girl. Um, how come I can't remember her name? Anyway, but Daisy Chainsaw, that was the band. And that was like, I'm, I'm done with this band. So I gave my notice after we got back home and the lawyers called me and said, I'm under contract to play this last show at the whiskey. So I played it. And, but if you see pictures, my friend Lindsay Rice took pictures and I was like in this dress that looked like I just came out of an insane asylum. And I had like these, those sleeper things on my head and my head was shaved. And I was just like, I'm um, playing with my back to the band. I was just pure anger. And it's, I'm not angry anymore, but I can call up that feeling, you know? And, and, you know, but throughout all this, I have to reflect and look at myself. I, I had my own issues, whatever they may have been. I wanted things my way and, you know, I didn't need to cling so tight and creativity. You, you cling to it. You don't want anyone touching your baby or fucking with it. And then I was, as I started doing my own bands, I was like, hey, this is a democracy. We're all gonna get paid the same if, if things pan out. I wasn't really singing, but I was writing songs with the singers. And so, you know, I was trying to let things go better and be more, you know, like a Sonic Youth or a Pearl Jam. I believe they split things equally and I, mean, I don't know anymore, but yeah, well, Sonic Youth, yeah. Um, in Hole and Mazzy Star, um, were you more of like a hired hand or were you involved in the, the writing process? No, in Hole, we all wrote together and we would, it, it would be, we go in and jam out a song and create a song right there. <clears throat> but that's why, again, this is so sad, but I felt like Violet, the song Violet that went on the next record. I, I know I co-wrote that, but I got no publishing. So I tried to get a lawyer. See, I felt that way about Doll Parts too, but you know, anyway. So I tried to get a lawyer, but it was like mafia town and no one would touch it. Mm. And so nothing panned out and okay. So I didn't get that money either. All right, you know. But I do still get a little bit from Hole, but again, it's very small. And unless someone puts it in a movie or something, I don't, I don't really know. Yeah. But again, I'm, I'm like, I saw Eric. I was actually, after all the music said and done, I had bought a house and I was like, I got to work. So I got a job at Whole Foods. And Eric came in and I was like, Eric in Pasadena? And, and he's like, hey. And I was, you know, I wasn't mad. I was like, hey, what's up? And, it was all cool, but you know, I, yeah. so I, I kind of let that go because I'm not going to hold on to the anger, but I can, as recalling, I can remember the turbulence, you know. Yeah. Um, Eric at Whole Foods. Yeah, Eric. I'm like, <laughs> may I serve you a juice, Your <laughs> Honor? No. <laughs> um, yeah, before we get to, Mazzy Star, um, I like. I always tell people that this is a really boring question, but people thank me for asking these types of questions because there's this like myth that uh, people in bands or who get discovered like they just magically get signed to a label and then they never have to work a regular job again and then everything is fine. How often did you have to work other jobs to supplement your income, and was there ever a time? when you just were able to make a living being in a band? Um, yeah, I basically, I think with Hole, I just had like these 
odd jobs, you know, just making jewelry, whatever work. Oh, I know I had to work at a, oh, that was scary, but it was all musicians working there. It was a uh, airline, like we sold airline tickets, but it was, seemed a little sketchy and people would shoot out the windows. So, you know, and, and again, this girl, she was so nice, but she was a heroin addict. She came in one day cause you know, we, the owner was kind of sketchy. So we didn't really care if what happened, she was the manager and she'd come in and she had her little horse pajamas on. She's like, she was, Hey, Jill, how's it going? I'm like, Hey, what's up? She's like, Oh, nothing. I see her get in the safe and take money and then leave. I'm like, bye. It's cool. Whatever. <laughs> I, this is shady. I'm, I don't even know why I'm here, you know, but it was like, you just, so you were trying to scrounge up money, you know? And then after a while I didn't work. So, um, but then in Mazzy Star, I didn't work for, you know, for I think a couple of years. Yeah. Um, yeah, I do want to talk about how did you join Mazzy Star? Um, what album, yeah, and like what album was that? Cause were they big yet? It was, yeah, I think Faded to You had just probably come out and I toured on that record, which was, um, oh my God, what was the name of the record? I know, I forget the name. Anyway, <laughs> it's okay. Everyone will know, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's a good record. Yeah. So, but, okay, first of all, let me tell you the story. It all started in Boston, okay? So we were, Hole was in Boston playing the show. We slept at this girl's house who was wonderful. And she turned me on to Mousy Star. I didn't know them. She's like, I'm like, dude, this is great. I love it. And so I go, can you make a tape so we can listen to it in the van? And, and it was, I think she hangs brightly record. It wasn't their other one. Um, so I just would play it over and over. And so after then all said and done, I was out of hole. I put out an ad in the recycler and I said, bassist looking to start a band. Um, okay, this is pretty funny. Uh, influences, Mary Unfaithful. Uh, yep, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Mary Unfaithful, uh, Mazzy Star, and Black Sabbath. And like, Mazzy Star calls me and I'm like, what? They're like, hey, you want to come down and, you know, jam a bit? And I'm like, yeah, I'll, I'll be there. And of course he had a great studio. I mean, they, you know, David just, he was an archivist with instruments. I mean, he just had it, you know? And, uh, and I remember thinking, wow, this is, I can't believe I'm playing these songs that I love. And, you know, I'm not great. I, I'm a slow learner, but once I get it, I'm on it, you know? So that was really cool. And, and then they didn't hear back. And I remember Hope tells the story. Oh yeah. You, you said, can I take off my shoes? And, and I was like, I don't remember that. And, and she's like, and we all just laughed because they were very like quiet and nothing, you know, it was opposite of whole, but, um, so after that, I didn't hear from them maybe for a couple of weeks. And then they called me and said, Hey, we're playing this show, uh, with red house painters. And it was just a club. And they're like, you want to play them? I'm, I'm like, I don't think I know the songs that well. And they're like, just come and play. I'm like, okay, but I'm going to be staring at your hands to see chord changes, you know? And I played the show. And then from there on, you know, we, I went on tour with them for that record. And they paid me, you know, I was a hired musician, so I didn't get royalties, but like, you know, I didn't play on the record uh, for writing the songs. So then we toured and it was great. And another musician, maybe you could uh, interview be Suki. She was in Opal and Mousy Star mm -hmm. and she's nice. So her and I were rooming together at the time and we got, you know, to know each other. And she was very quiet. I'm like, what the hell? I'm in this room with this chick that's not talking. And I, you know, I can't stop talking. <laughs> so then we started like playing guitar and in the room and we did a Carpenter song and, and we became friends. And, uh, and then later, I guess Suki wasn't in the band and I can't remember why that happened. And then 
I guess they got someone else to play guitar and we were on tour and, and then luckily they gave me my own room which was great because I I like being alone you know and so that kind of how that's how that all went and you know they were they were nice it, I mean there was you know there was obviously turbulence in that too but not with me I mean there was just stress like hope was very private and stressed and David was super private but you know nice people um she was great I mean we we became friends after a while and I tried to um we were gonna write together and, and I wrote a couple songs and she put the lyrics to them and sounded great. And, but we didn't have the musicians. It was just me and her. So she had a, she flew us out to London and we stayed out there for about a month looking for musicians and it was a little up and down. And then we, I flew up to Berkeley. That's where she lived at the time, um, stayed at her house and looked for musicians there and, you know, and in LA, but it was, it was hard. And then we got musicians and it just, we recorded maybe a little bit, but you know, cause she was, you know, when you're the singer or songwriter, you're, you're good with money when you're selling records, right? You don't need to worry. She had a beautiful home. She was so kind and giving though. She was very good to me. Um, you don't have to, you don't have deadlines of money, you know? And she was paying me, but when time was off, I had a mortgage, I'm like, dude, I, I can't wait around. She's like, oh, I know. And, and so then after a while, I just kind of walked and said, I can't do this anymore. I have to, that's when I got my job at Whole Foods. And, and then they called me to go back up uh, to record more after a while, but it, it just wasn't, something wasn't clicking. Mm -hmm. And as I left, she was very kind to give me a few thousand dollars in good faith because she had already been paying me. But, you know, she's just like, what happened? And I'm like, I can't, I have to be steady. And I'm the type that's working. A lot of times I had two bands, my own band and these bands. Mm -hmm. Same while I was in, whole I, I was in shadow project on my own band same with madly star i had my own band and i'm i'm a worker i work all the time i paint all the time you know mm -hmm. so that's just how it is um well i do want to know when so you you played in like did you keep playing in bands after the mid 90s but just on a lower scale, yeah. when did visual yeah. art become like more? Well, my art, I just kept working on it more and more because I had more time. And I, I was trying to think about a style in my art, not thinking what a style is, but I wanted to do a lot of animals and I wanted to convey that they have feelings and emotions and they're not just these things that we keep or kill or like, you know, like this, this donkey, it's like tuning into, um, and the, these are like tuning, tuning pegs on the guitar and there's a rainbow, but it's, it's tuning into like being free and not burdened as a lot of times mules or donkeys are burdened and they're used. And, you know, I always want to show them in a freedom sense. Mm -hmm. um, so I was trying to do it where it's not cutesy, but it was trying to convey something. And, and so I would just kind of go from there. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love, um, I love your style and I'm assuming you did everything. I didn't do all of them. Like, like this one I got, I really like it. She, she yeah. did metal with that. Cool. And then this one is well, my partner now. Um, yeah. and she, it's, it's of a woman in a bed and she, she's, she's ill. So mm -hmm. she hence put herself in the bed. Um, but you know, it, she's, it's okay. I mean, I learned a lot from a person that's very sick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but the rest, yeah, I, I do ceramics and tiles. Oh, and, no kidding. Know. Yeah. I, I fucking, I mean, is this what you're focusing on more now? Is oh, your yeah. visual art? Yeah. This is like what you do yeah. now. 
yeah, I've been, I've been, ve- I've been doing very well where I can pay all my bills for the last couple of years. Um, but it's not guaranteed that I'm going to have the money, but it's been very, I feel very, uh, I'm full of gratitude. Like I, I, I'm thankful. I'm very thankful. And I, and I recognize that way it, it just keeps coming too. It, it totally, it, it does. Yeah. 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 And, and two with like, I don't mean to just, I don't want to be negative about the music. I had great times and I, I learned a lot and I learned a lot about myself by reflecting on the past and going, Jill, man, you got to fix some stuff on yourself. You know, it's like, you're not, you know, you, you know, even though I was serious about the music and I loved playing and it was, that's it, man, this is my thing. I just, I didn't know how to handle people. I, and that's why I didn't make tons of friends in the music business. I was very into quiet in my own thing. And again, maybe I was scared. I, I met a friend a couple of years ago. He moved out here and I hadn't seen him in years. And he was a heroin addict. And I said, dude, I was so afraid of you. You creeped me out. And I said, and he's clean now. He's like, does shaman work? And it's great. There's the human coming out. And two, I grew. So hence we had more of an open thing. It's nice. Yeah. You know? So yeah, I don't I don't take anything that you say well, it's I, negative. Yeah. Um, I mean the headlock thing, was that okay? You know, getting Yeah, that was okay. And if you decide it's not, I'll just I'll take yeah. it out. Like I'm not trying to make but, it and I don't want to be like, oh, I I didn't make money. I mean, I did make money, but I didn't get proper royalties they were a little bit askew so that I am pissed about that but not still I'd let it go otherwise I'd be where's my dollar you know (laughs) no and you're not the first like again I I'm I've been like defending Courtney Love my whole life because she's an addict and a widow and um you know I don't know her as a person I don't have to like condone her behavior but yeah you know, she was really, I, aside from like Yoko Ono, I think she might be even like more vilified in the <laughs> press than like, yeah. Yoko. Well, Yoko's yeah. had some time. So she's a, maybe it. Kind Yoko's of, okay now. Yeah. Maybe everyone but, died and had that feeling or something. Yeah. But I mean, I'll still like look at Courtney's Instagram and it's just like murder. I'm like, seriously? Like 30? Oh, really? I, yeah. I thought she, like, I just thought it was, like, people, like, gushing over. I didn't realize. No, 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 no. Probably, like, half and half. But, I mean. Wow, she, really? Oh, yeah. It's still hmm. a lot. And so, yeah, once I found out she got clean and sober, I was just like, you know what? Great. Okay. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Because um, yeah. <laughs> a lot of times the, the drugs just alter your whole who you are, you know? Yeah. And I, I don't know how she is not on drugs I'm sure she's much more level yeah I'm not sure of anything actually I take that back I'm not sure of anything I'm not even sure who I am like (laughs) how could I project who that person you know no but my my point was I'm just always going off on tangents but I interviewed Melissa Oftermauer too Mm -hmm. I did watch that yeah super underpaid but she also like it you can have these two thoughts that aren't like mutually exclusive so she's a she supports Courtney, but she's like, yeah, this was my experience. And it was like super corporate and I got paid $600 a week and yeah. I was in like the biggest band on the planet. So right. yeah, it didn't really. No, like and, it, and but... Melissa, like uh, one thing I want to say is when I, I did watch it, dude, you are, I know she's learned this, but like she was saying, you know, I didn't care about the money. Well, I can understand not caring about the money, but when you're putting yourself in there and like she said, she sang, honestly, I don't, I don't know that record, but she sang, she said she was putting in parts and I believe it. I understand that. And that money is your money. That's, it's not okay that someone doesn't treat. I learned this from a friend, Nancy Monk. She's like, you are an artist, you get paid, you are doing your thing. And so same thing with music. It's, I think my first record with the super heroines, I think they brought, bought us a taco and, and I never saw a penny. Yeah. And then, you know, we talk about, I don't want to just say women, men, women, men, but 
I called uh, Cleopatra Records the other day. I'm like, dude, you guys keep pressing the same record that I wrote on and I'm on the cover and you're using my name. I haven't seen one penny. And they're like, well, Eva sold us the rights in 2015. And I'm like, okay, wow. goodbye. I believe it. It's all right. Yeah. You know, and, then, and that's, that's the music business. It's harsh. I mean, unless, I don't know, but, but yeah. So no, with Melissa, I, I, I heard her. She was very like, Oh, Courtney's great. But you know, we were, I only got paid that, but I was cool without the money. And I'm like, no, you're working your ass off. But then, you know, and the pump smashing pumpkins, good for her. Cause that's, that's a workout right there. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so like, just, you're not the only person to like, okay. Say these things. And yeah. it's just, well, and I watched the Exine one because I love X. I X was a band I would always go and see. And it almost like it felt like Exine was making it like they didn't make money, but I couldn't it was eluded, but I couldn't really tell. And I was like, God, are you kidding me? I went to every show, I had all their records. I mean Yeah. But I don't know. I still don't really get it. But I mean, even that interview, I was like, you know, we went to this little house that she rented it and like was living with her goddaughter and was working as a secretary. Like, oh, so, Exine. You mean that interview that you did? That we just did. She was still like working another job. So yeah, I guess when X covers, but I know. So I'm not sure exactly, you know, publishing rights and all that stuff. Or I'm shocked that. because she wrote the songs, man. I mean, I'm, I'm tripping up. I don't know. Wow. Well, I would have dug more, but I was super nervous. And I well, couldn't tell if she liked me the whole time. And then at the end, she was like, do you guys want to come out to eat with me? Oh, <laughs> that's like, sweet. Oh, so, well, I think that's a protective, I don't know her. I mean, I, yeah. you know, but I think that's a protective coating she's wearing. I mean. I think so, yeah. And usually. I mean, you guys went out and ate. Yeah, it, it was, I was like not expecting that. We had a really nice dinner and she's like oh, a lovely, yeah. friendly person, so. But sometimes it's like that. It'll be a little awkward at the beginning because I think, especially people who maybe haven't been fairly represented in the media all the time or yeah. have people like- Oh, and she, like, yeah, I know she went through a lot too. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Um, so I get it. And I just yeah. try to be like my friendly self and pretend that it doesn't bother <laughs> me. I'm like, I don't notice anything. <laughs> I do though. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, blah, blah, blah like crossing things off we go we've covered so many interesting things yeah, um, oh it's like all over it's like boom i know but these are my favorite though because i like i hate going in order i hate when they're all hard to stay in a line i mean yeah because yeah. other things come up um but i do want to know um what your creative process is is it uh different for art visual art than it is for music or how do you how does like an idea come to you and then how does that materialize well a lot of times like with music I would sit at home and try and structure a song and bring it in um or have people work with me and we would jam it out too I mean and and like it was great you know so if you're on the same page so um that would be one way and uh but like you know say with whole we would just jam out songs because, you know, they're pretty thrashy, but you would still go, okay, now we need this thing called a bridge. And then we would go into that. You know bridges. Um, I didn't know what bridges were. And then, and then retard, too, at the end. Like, do you yeah. And I'm like, what are these things? Because I'm pretty much self-taught. But it, it was fun. It was fun learning. And it was interesting. Um, but, yeah, I, I like, I'm a kind of a quiet, I like my quiet stuff and that's how I think and work I'm not great in chaos so it's I like to work one-on-one -on -one with someone or by myself mm -hmm. and then with the art it's great because um I I have usually a couple paintings going at once I get my coffee I'm all, I start early in the morning if um you know I'm on that and all of a sudden I'll just go it might be ADD but I'll go over to my guitar and I'll just start playing that. And then I, for some reason, have a hi-hat hi -hat over there. I'm like, let me pretend I'm in Miles Davis's band, you know, and, you know, just, and then I'm like, wait, I got to cook some food. So like right now I'm making 
a really good like uh, like vegan soup broth and and so I could just sip that and so it's just I'm doing a multiple of things and then all of a sudden I'll just get really focused on the painting and I'll laugh and I'll write words on the side because I'm thinking of funny things like if I'm painting someone like Bill Callahan and just picturing him and I don't know but you had mentioned earlier this is what's funny well two two things I just want to tell you uh you okay I know you did the Marianne Faithful book right yes I did okay yeah here's she my Marianne Faithful. what's that she likes it we talked on the phone she's oh my god that's now. great uh, yeah that is she seems pretty cool, right? She's cool. I'm actually like slightly offended because I haven't heard from her since last week. <laughs> I don't know if- Oh, oh know you mean you guys happened. talk on a regular basis? Yeah, we like we're talking and texting for a while. She's probably, she's like, I think she was recording not too long ago with, um, what's his name? The guys from the Bad Seeds? Well, I can't remember. Warren Ellis, I think. And yeah, anyway. Well, she released that album like after she got sick with COVID. And oh, now she's been right. working with somebody else, like still is working on stuff and like writing songs. Fucking I think hard. that's exciting. Yeah. I'm, Sorry. I'm glad. And <laughs> but no, but my Mary, okay. I I went uh with Stacy. Stacy wanted Marianne Faithful's book sign, and this was years ago. And <laughs> this is just funny to me. So here, here's a piece of paper. So I'm like, I don't like to like dote over anyone, you know, I'm not like that. And I always thought, well, if Dalai Lama came in to get a smoothie or a, a juice, would I give it to him for free? Am I allowed? You know, but he pulls up in a limo probably. So, yeah. so then like I go up, I, my friend gets her book signed and then I go up to her and I have a piece of paper this big and I have a giant Sharpie and I'm like, can you autograph this? And she looked at it and then she starts laughing. I'm like, oh, this is, this is better than an autograph. I'm like, all right, man. Have, have a great one. I'll probably never see you again. And then same thing with Patti Smith. I never, I'm not going to dote over Patti Smith, even though she's amazing. We saw her at Amoeba years ago and I'm like, okay, Jill, you got to go get her autograph. I'm like, I'm not going to stand in this line and get Patti Smith autograph. Just do it. And I'm like, okay. And my legs were hurting for some reason. So it's my turn and like Lenny Kay's like signing my poster that they gave us. And, and she's like, I'm like, oh, hey, I, she's like, what's your name? And I go, Hill. And she goes, Hill. Okay. And I go, it was really hard waiting in line because I, I think I have like shin splints or something. And she's, and she's like, you got to get yourself some of those support stockings. And I go, oh, and she goes, no, they're cool. You can get them in black. And I go, okay, I'll do that. And then I just left and I didn't go, you're, you saved my life. So I made a painting drawing of it with those words and someone, my friend bought it. Um, but I just thought it was pretty funny. Like That's that was my big thing after 1977 event. Yeah. My meeting. That's anyway. amazing. I mean, you can't funny. ask for a better story. Like, yeah. Cause what am I going to do? you're so amazing and she's yeah. like yeah yeah okay kid I've heard that before yeah. no I, I, I wanted to tell her why did you say you want a big old steak because she said that and I'm like dude why are you saying that because you know I want her to be a vegan oh know? but I was like is she a vegan no <laughs> no she was talking about a steak yeah I know it's depressing, like, yeah. but I figure everyone will like come around eventually I know, I know. I'm I actually kidding. was trying to I haven't brought it up yet but I really want Marianne to like at least go plant-based while she's recovering from you know because it's just like fucking better for your immune system Holy shit. I, I think I think if you I don't know if you could go to her house and maybe I don't know how you are with she's in the UK so okay well I bet they have good vegan restaurants now it used to be like really bad out there but I bet it's really good now yeah. like nothing happening with that I know if she like, gets a I good taste of that but I think yeah you don't want to turn oh. into I don't want to be that person. I don't either. I don't either. I don't, I don't push it. I just, no. Most people don't even really know that I am unless they, I like go out to eat with them or sometimes I'll make look like to my friends, I'll make jokes to them just to be obnoxious. Yeah. Um, you know, they have a hot dog and I'm like, enjoy your pig entrails. Oh my God. And, stuff, and they're like, ha ha ha. Like, yeah. I, 
I, but, yeah, I get, I, I'm not scared to say that. I just, I just think, okay, I'm going to lead by example, but yeah, I know I, you, and then people are like, why aren't you eating anything? <laughs> it's like a place where I can't really eat anything. And then it comes yeah. up or exactly. I'm having like a bowl of lettuce or something. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I don't want to eat a bowl of lettuce, but I can't. Yeah, but I'm suffering because you get this restaurant that's like backwards. No, no. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, oh, I do want to know, <laughs> you sort of mentioned at the beginning, you're not, uh, so you're not really like on stage per performing anymore, um, but you are an aging woman, as we yeah. all are, and a yes. creative woman. What is it like getting older? Okay. Um, what's it like getting older? Yeah. Um, well, thankfully I have a couple of friends that are getting older with me and we, um, we laugh like we're just, you know, we're laughing about it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, wait, you can't do that. Oh yeah. I'm, I, I'm trying, I'm trying to keep up with this, but it's just going down. Like, I'm like, Oh my, I'm like, my face is filling out. And I realize it's dropping. Yeah. Like, cause I, cause I like, look, check, Oh, well, I don't even know why I'm doing this. I'm pre I feel no, like I'm, not, I mean, um, same thing. Yeah. And like the neck and everything. I was like, oh. oh, the neck. Yeah. And, and um, so I'm just kind of like, <laughs> and then I have, there are people I know that are getting work done mm -hmm. and I'm like, don't get that. That's, that's fucked up. You're, you're selling out. And then I look and I'm like, Hey man, your neck looks pretty good. <laughs> but then I'm like now, well, I shouldn't say it. Cause anyway, I shouldn't say, it. but I, I'm not going to get work done. I'm going to let it all hang out. Patty Smith, did she, did she get work done? Nope. No. She looks fine. Cool as fuck, too. She's like, I, fucking cool. Yeah. I, I'm just like, you know, um, it, it's hard to see that, you know, because like when you posted that, that's all young pictures of me. I'm like, fuck, man, those are all young pictures. People are going to look at me and go, is that a grandma? But I could be a grandma now. So it's it's what it is. Well, it's just because it was you with a base. No, I know. I know that. No, but I'm, the, I'm very adamant about, so I have a friend of mine who does, she makes the graphics for when the interview is released. And I have, yeah, I, it's like a rule of mine that it has to be a recent photo. Oh, okay. And even like the Marianne What's Faithful book. Name? Her name's Crystal Ford. Crystal Ford. Yeah. Try and find one little decent one of me, please. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll find a high res, just like <laughs> headshot. Does that answer? Does that answer about aging? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, truthfully though, my, yeah, it's age, but I used to like obsess about death, like all the time, all the time, death, death, death. And now I, I don't want to cry, but my, my cat, like, um, about two weeks ago, I, I put her down, but anyway, Miss Olive, but, um, I, it was great. We sat on the bed and opened the back door, had the birds just going off me, her and my little cat, Betty. And we meditated for two hours. We just laid there peacefully. And I started realizing that it's not the death it's the fear of the death that's killing me because I'm okay being sad it's it's I was just so afraid of losing her and the process so anyways I don't know why I brought, oh we because you talked about aging and death goes with that as well I mean you know I am I mean, sorry I, I feel your I exclusively adopt senior dogs, so and like foster them. So awesome. I do that a lot. And I I just had a really similar experience with a it was the first like kind of nice, almost meditative experience with I had to put one of my my last foster down. And now I'm now it's just me and Andrew, my old guy. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, but it was hours of us just like sitting there together and it was really calm and it was really peaceful and yeah it's just like it's weird because it's just well but it's in a way happy. you're communicating yeah. with something that's going to be gone and if if all people could go through that process and some people do I mean my friend he's going through uh becoming a death doula he's how you take classes on I guess they you know and you you help people transition into the next whatever I don't even know but 
I think that's beautiful. And if you get that opportunity, wonderful. Because why should we be gripping on fear when we're leaving? And, and we don't all get, it's not a vending machine, what death is coming your way. It's when it comes, it comes. But, but yeah, I used to really be upset. Like I was like Woody Allen or something, just like, oh, you know. And now, you know, obviously I work on things. I have to work hard or, <clears throat> so that, that went hand in hand with that aging question. Yeah. Um, all right. Oh, okay. So I just, I have the last questions that I okay. ask everybody. Okay. Um, how do you feel about your role in and contribution to rock history as a whole? How do I feel about my contribution? Um, you know, I didn't really recognize the contribution until just not too long ago, actually. And I'm, I feel really proud of it. I, I, and that's one thing I wish I still did is record. I love recording. I love layering. I love being in the process. You, it's, there is like a, a intel, not intellect, but there is a part where you will sit there and listen, analyze and talk and uh, then you'll play and layer and it's beautiful. So I'm, I'm proud of like, I'm proud of it. I, I, I'm, I'm grateful for all the people that I met, whether it was uh, harsh learning and, uh, but it was all a part of the process and it was great. Yeah. Yeah, I was thinking about your email and I'll take this out, but I'm like, you know, I get so many, I get a lot of emails from people who were like, why haven't you asked to interview me yet? <laughs> like, like this is supposed to be a comprehensive project and you have an interview I'm like oh my god in like what fucking world yeah you have the I, nerve to like first of all like you're already setting a tone for the interview with yeah. this slightly aggressive you know now I just ignore them I used to feel really bad and now I'm just like you know what well, I know, but I and mean, like yours was the exact opposite right yeah, I normally even reach out so I was like and then you're like I, do I qualify? <laughs> well, I'm like, because I'm like, I don't put myself out there. And, and that's what everyone always tells me. You, you're not putting yourself out. You don't say it enough. You don't use it. And I'm like, oh, okay. And so I got these coaches all around me. But um, so I, and I was just, I love that hearing their stories. It just, for some reason, I love it. And, you know, I don't know everyone, but I, I find it interesting. So, I mean, I was like, oh, I want to be a part of this, but I, I would never be aggressive about it. Like, yo, bitch, get, get me on there. Like, you know, that was my Breaking Bad Jesse. But anyway, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's insane. So yours was really nice. And then I'm like, okay, I definitely want to interview. Oh my God. Because she's yeah. like unnecessarily humble. And it, it's funny because I, we I was just talking about you with my friend Mills. And they were, oh. so, they were like, wait, how did, like, they shared an interview with me. I can't remember when it was from, but they were just like, she's painting now, like, in California. You should try to find her. I'm like, yeah, I should try to find her. And yeah. then you emailed well, me. The poor thing already has done a bunch of people from home, you know? So it's like, <laughs> yeah. how, many, how many more could she do, you know? Yeah. Um, I know, I really just, I mean, I would interview uh carolyn too if i can never find oh yeah she's sure sweet. That's, yeah she's um, really down to earth and just yeah she's a good person you know yeah so i'll find her but i have wanda jackson on monday so i need to like conserve my energy yeah 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 i'm like i'm gonna lose my fucking mind like well okay yeah yeah i know sometimes i do too many and then i'm like no i need to leave the week for wanda jackson because i'm gonna need to like repair yeah then calm down afterwards well i don't take, don't don't take this to because my friend's very good friends with lydia lunch and but that seems like a tough one. Oh no actually like, lydia's like a really good friend of mine <laughs> yeah yeah no he he's one of my him. biggest supporters and um That's i think maybe i don't know like she was my first interview which was stupid like I should never have done that. I said nothing the whole time. I just like let he did her. It. Well, <laughs> dude, look, look at this. See this painting? Yeah. This is based on on that. 
because because it's like this this painting is like sharing space and then it's like and then it's called you go no you go conversation you did you guys did not have a conversation no. i was i was but i didn't watch the whole thing i and left I, it in at the beginning where she says don't worry about it i'm just going to do my monologue and yes. i was too nervous to interject at all like had i known then what i know now yeah i probably would not have scheduled lydia lunch first <laughs> i was scared I certainly do not want to interrupt her. <laughs> like, there's, there's a fine line there. There's a fine line. And, and maybe being an interviewer, like it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing job. I mean, you have to really know how to listen. You have to know how to pull things out, but you have to know how to interject too. And with that one, I'm not saying that that she's a handful, but she's a ball of energy. Oh yeah. And so that's what's so interesting about her is her energy and it just boom. But I was just kind of like, wow. Yeah. No. And actually like, I don't know what it looks like as a viewer because all you see is her and that and her energy. But I mean, we had a bunch of breaks. Like she was very nice to me, like kept thanking me and saying how important the project. I just saw her last weekend. We've stayed friends like seven years now. And she just, I told someone the other day that she's just, unnecessarily supportive of me like she's super encouraging um not unnecessarily it's i mean she just doesn't have to she's she's excited what you're doing and she's like wow because you know we're all getting older and she might be like yeah i mean i can remember teenage jesus and the jerks and i was just like what the fuck is this and so i can you know and we're all getting older and so it's like you're pres- you're like preserving it in a way and getting the story and and that is huge because it wasn't massive amounts of women but there were a lot of women involved in the punk scene so new wave punk whatever i mean so yeah but men definitely outnumber it <laughs> yeah um, yeah i always like to tell people how like if you're nice and you don't walk up to her either fawning over her or being people uh it's really weird. And I think it's because of her persona, but people oftentimes walk up to her with this very like confrontational attitude, just I'm going to get her. And it's like, dude, all right. If you want to, um, that's like PR social media or like have a story to tell your friends, that's one thing, but she's actually like a super nice person and is really generous and giving. So you could also just be normal and like, just say hi, (laughs) have a nice conversation and separate what you might think and engage and see what you see what maybe great thing that can come out of it and maybe you could find something about yourself i don't know i mean yeah but so yeah i always like thank you for giving me this opportunity to also be like <laughs> stick up for lydia launch hands i oh yeah yep. yeah i mean i man no it's just that energy but that energy is what propels her i mean and and um, yeah yeah. No, I mean, she's always fucking working too. Like yeah. she loves creating, she loves working and she loves bringing other people into her fold, which is great. Everything yeah. she does is like a new project with oh, it's, some it's other so artist or musician or. And it can, and it could like also like spark a different creative flow for her. It's great. Yep. And that's also what I liked what Exine said. She was just like, Oh, I don't know if she said this. Maybe she didn't. Like she was taking a writing class or something. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. You're you're a writer, but you wanna do more. You you're not just gonna go, okay, uh, she had to leave Los Angeles. It's like I'm gonna keep working, man, you know? Yeah. So no, it was her. You see you do have a better memory than you think you do. I started taking these Lucky mushrooms memory. Uh, that are good for memory, lion's mane. So maybe that that helped. Because my memory is really bad. Other interviews I've done, I'm like, uh, I can't remember. It's terrible. But and two, you're you're pulling out things. You're doing good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we keep going. We keep like going off. All right. So I have. We can end this like two more. It's gonna be no. Long. I got two more. Okay. And you sort of already. So. Um, I think I'll ask this one first. Um, this is called the Women of Rock Oral History Project, right? Yes. It's a fucking dumb name. I didn't know what else to call it, but it includes 
transgender musicians, gender nonconforming musicians. So I'm basically just trying to like update and expand and just not, I have no interest in documenting the lives and careers of like cis men. So I don't know what else to call it. I gotcha. Are gendered categories um, reductive, harmful? Are they still necessary in a way like, uh, you know, categorizing women in rock as women in rock? Or should we be moving away from that? You know, that that's a really, that's a question I don't even know if I could have an answer to. I mean, for me, my whole life, I felt androgynous, but I don't even know if that's a thing anymore. Like, I'm not even sure what things are what. Um, but I'm open to it being open and accepted. I mean, you know, I'm gay and I'm like LGBTQ and, and <laughs> like I was telling someone and they're like, why are you leaving that out? And I said, I just don't know all of the letters. And I said, why is asexuals left out? You know, I don't know enough about all of that, but women, I don't know anymore. I mean, I still gravitate towards women and, and you know, that, did you see that documentary? Well, you probably did, you play drums, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, the drummer docu on Netflix. Yeah, like Count Me In. Yeah. I was like, well, there better fucking be women in there. And why am I still saying that in 2021? Mm -hmm. Now, that being said, there were women, thank God. And some women I didn't even know why I, there could have been other ones that I thought were, that should have been in there. But so that that's where I'm confused. Why am I still saying that, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. Makes sense, yeah, I get it's, I love asking that question because, you know, it's like, comes straight from the horse's mouth, like, so to speak. I mean, people who are, are musicians and all of the answers are very different. Like I've interviewed some people who said, I almost didn't want to say yes because I don't want to do another like women in rock interview. Um, so yeah, like eventually- Part of me you know, understands that. I understand that, yeah. Yeah, part um, of me understands that, but part of me, yeah. I mean, I, I always have these, I mean, I'm on a group text with like five people and I think there's three, two guys and three women. And I started saying, well, that lawyer, I don't know what I'm talking about, lawyer, that person treated you like a dumb little girl and that's not okay. Because when a man's voice was talking to them, it changed the game. Why am I saying that in 2021? Mm -hmm. It's, and she is smart. She's freaking smart. So why is he talking her down? It's not okay. So that's my answer. Yes, no. I don't know. I'm with you. I feel the same. And I'm like, I don't know what the answer is yet. So this is, this is just what it is for now. And I interview a lot of different people. And then maybe, you know, five, 10 years from now, I'll think of a better name. Yeah. And, and you know what? And things can change. You can yeah. change. Okay. There's, there's yeah. no rules. Um, I also want to know your thoughts on, so thinking about rock history, like who is remembered, um, is do you think that there is still a gender discrepancy in rock history, in the rock narrative? Has it changed for better or worse, or is it just not an issue and everything's great? Um, I mean, that would go like the battle in the art world, which I'm not well versed on it, but women artists are like, where the fuck are the women? Where are the women? Why is it all these men, 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 men? So with the music, I mean, I don't know. I, I, it, history, women, I mean, you, you dug out something the other day and I'm not on Facebook that much, but you put in that band, Bam Bams. Oh whatever. yeah, Tina Bell, yep. I didn't know who that was, but I mean, people, I mean, but then there's a million bands like that, but those are underground. So if you're talking bands like Fanny or something like that, maybe, um, but yeah, so, I mean, I, like, can you give me a, for instance, who you would think that's not being recognized? Maybe I need to recognize, because I, I don't know. No, I think like, just in general, um, I think I'm thinking of, 
rock history as sort of like the canon or when you see kind of lists, you know, best rock bands of all time. Yes. And you see yes. The, yes. the gender discrepancy in those lists where you have female figureheads, you know, yes. the ones who were, you got Patti Smith, Blondie, right? Yes. Stevie yes. Nicks, yes. Joan Jett. You're totally right. That's it. <laughs> oh, you're right. And thanks for jarring my memory because those lists feel like corporate headquarters. They feel like bullshit to me. Mm. And so, yes, thanks for bringing that up. That that reminds me, because I feel like I'm more in a world down here. Like I know. I'm trying to find bands that are like interesting, cool, happening in my mind. Yeah. I'm not up on that echelon looking looking into it. Mm -hmm. But when you when you mention it corporate oh yeah totally corporate like and, I would burn the magazine today yeah and I used to say that too and and rock hall of fame you know it's like four yeah. percent of inductees are women um but that's also the mainstream is important in the way that like that is how the general public is introduced to music really it's like I didn't grow up um knowing what the underground was or knowing what punk rock was i grew up reading magazines and seeing oh what's this album whole pretty on the inside and then you guys would talk about your influences so i would do digging oh, yeah. Yeah. but i but as far as like that's why i think lists are corporate but they're important yeah. for just the general public and like suburban kids who don't have access to cool shit <laughs> or like but now you know, with the around. internet it feels like and it, i was lucky i lived in the suburbs but we had a college all those colleges college radio was man and rodney on the rocks like i was so lucky yeah. lucky 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 because same thing with all the zines i would just look at every picture and who is this who's that oh this is amazing so, and I still feel like I would go more that way. But yeah, I mean, yeah, Patti Smith is probably going to be on that list. Of course, yeah. Blondie, Deborah Harry. I, you know, I do understand that, you know. So I, I got it, but um, it's still, they're not going to put someone up against Tony Iommi or, you know, um, Entwistle, you know, the drum, you know, Keith Moon and on those lists. It's, just feels like, you know, yeah. I don't know. Hey, you know I'm you? working on it. Yeah. <laughs> <It's Right. nice. laughs> and um, last question, the Oprah question. Uh, it's pretty easy. What are you most proud of personally and or professionally? Like just about what? Music or anything? It, it could be music. It could be your paint. It could be anything. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm proud about how I developed a style on the bass that I was trying to incorporate into my songs. And it's like a lot of, um, core, can I just show you really quick? Yeah. Yes. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is a, oh my God. Know. Yes. <laughs> like who knows if I can remember, and this isn't my true bass, but it's like <clears throat> for the moment. You know, like these chords, like I love, like. So I would try and incorporate that into songs and not that I'm the first one that did it. I'm not even sure who does it because it's hard for me to tell, mm -hmm. but I know bass players, but I love the dissonance. I love the, the melody, like, and so that's something I'm proud of because I, I wanted to put it in everybody's like records that I played on and once in a while you might find it. And um, so that, and, and another, th I mean, I'm proud of being a part of the whole scene. I mean, that I, even though I wasn't a scene stir and I wasn't really popular, I was just always on the fringe of everything, you know, um, and I didn't make a whole lot of friends. That's okay. I'm good, you know, but um, I, so I'm proud of that. And I'm also proud that I I work really hard on trying to, I will never know, but understand why I am how I am and why I react. And, and through meditation, I do a lot of that. And 
So I'm proud that I'm dealing with stuff, you know, I mean, because just because I wasn't like a, a drug addict or an alcoholic or whatever, didn't mean I didn't have issues. So I can't just point the finger at people that were having their issues because I truly had my own. And so I'm, I'm proud of recognizing that, but I got to work till I'm dead, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yep. You know, so. Um, Okay, I'm gonna let you go, but I am. So you said that you're self-taught on base. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you like play by ear, or how did you develop your yeah. style? Just trial and error. Well, I would just, uh, yeah, I would play by ear, and the first thing I learned is when the guitar player was playing a bar chord, like here, I go, okay, that means my finger goes there. So as simple as you know, like. I had to go where those fingers went. So then later I started getting better with my ear. I never read music. Okay. And I just, that, and I was lucky that I had a lot of patient people when I started, they, they were already knew how to play and they would, they accepted me in this whole scene. And I just learned and got better and, and mostly wrote my own, would write songs. So that's how, oh, I could play that. I wrote that. But if you wanted me to, all of a sudden play like someone's song. I, I can't do it unless I learn it, but that I don't, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, um, I'm officially obsessed with you. Oh, no, you're not. You just, you no, just I, do. I think you're it's it's like so fucking enjoyable and yeah, you're a really fun. nice person, um, yeah. which is just always like a breath of fresh air because some people oh. are dicks but uh most of them are pretty nice it's on the dance floor no <laughs> um okay yeah i gotta eat something i gotta take my dog out yeah I got um you. you need to finish your vegan broth i know i can't wait i'm gonna dip that it. Oh. Yeah. so okay well nice chatting with you and let me know when this all happens it's probably a long one so cut it up a bit okay yeah um It'll be good. I mean, I don't like to chop them. I, I like no, them. I know. I, whatever. I, I trust let anyone embarrass themselves. Like, I would never. I care no. about everybody. So, uh, yeah, but I'll let you know when it goes up and we'll yeah. obviously tag you and everything. Yeah. And maybe I'll see you at my prospectus defense. You'll get, I'll copy you yeah. on my email invitation. <laughs> yeah. Now, is that going to be on Zoom? Yeah, it's on Zoom. Oh, yeah, please. No, you me. have to fly to Massachusetts. I know. I'm like, I want everyone here in person. I'm going to fly you out. <laughs> no, no I'm just on Zoom. I'd be interested. I'd be curious. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, just email me and let me know. Okay. And I will talk to you later. You have a good day. All right. Yeah, you too. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. If you liked this interview, you can watch 70 others on the Women of Rock Oral History Project YouTube page or listen to them wherever you get your podcasts. Women of Rock Oral History Project is a nonprofit organization and we accept donations all day, every day, forever. Thanks for the support and we'll see you soon.